Meanwhile, in a pair of decisions yesterday, the Florida Supreme Court upheld a 15-week ban on abortion in the state while also allowing a proposed amendment that would enshrine abortion protections in the state constitution to be on the November ballot. The decision also means that a six-week abortion ban signed into law last year will take effect. The Biden-Harris campaign now appears to see an opening to gaining ground in Florida this November. In a new memo given first to NBC News and released just moments after the state Supreme Court handed down those decisions, the campaign calls Florida a winnable state where they are looking to make inroads. The campaign highlights state leaders, quote, extreme agenda as one of the reasons they believe they can flip it. Democrats have seen success making reproductive rights, abortion health care, a key election issue. And moments ago, the Biden campaign released a new campaign ad that goes after Donald Trump's attacks on reproductive freedom. Take a look. Because for 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. In 2016, Donald Trump ran to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, in 2024, he's running to pass a national ban on a woman's right to choose. I'm running to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again, so women have a federal guarantee to the right to choose. Donald Trump doesn't trust women. I do. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. The ad is part of a $30 million spring ad campaign targeting voters in the battleground states. Joining the conversation we have, NBC News national affairs analyst John Heilman, the co-host of MSNBC's The Weeknd, Simone Sanders Townsend, and former White House Director of Communications to President Obama, Jennifer Palmieri. She's co-host of the MSNBC podcast, How to Win 2024 with Claire. Jen, I'll start with you. We're going all over the map. You were just in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I want you to talk a little bit about what we're seeing with voters in Michigan as it pertains to the southern border. And do they understand that Donald Trump actually had Republicans hold back on legislation that would have closed the border to an extent? Or are they falling for his lies? It just doesn't come up. I mean, when I was I was there last week, I went with uh, Secretary Granholm did a tour of Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin to talk about uh, Biden uh, ad administration investments in those three states. And I did three tour uh, stops with her uh, and Governor Whitmer in um, in Michigan. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you what what does come up. It is it's it's breaking through on infrastructure. Uh, you know, people mm -hmm. particularly in the state of Michigan, where you know she did a, uh, an, an event about uh, battery workforce initiative uh, for electric vehicles, of reopening a nuclear power plant um, in, the, in western Michigan, uh, real investments that are being made there, that's breaking through. People talk about the broadband investments, that's breaking through with people. People talk about insulin being cheaper, they understand that's because President Biden did something about it. And then the other big thing, Mika, national abortion ban. You know, Michigan yes. passed, a, they passed a ballot initiative last year to protect, to put that, to enshrine that right in the Michigan Constitution, but they're very aware um, and will pair it back to you, uh, that concern and what it means both for Republicans to be elected in Congress and for Trump to get elected. But border, I didn't hear about. Okay, interesting. I'm going to go from uh, Jen to Simone, from Michigan to Florida, and then to Heilman about both those states. But Simone, mm. what happened in Florida yesterday, it sort of feels like good news, bad news, but really big bad news first, because in the next few months, it's going to be unimaginable what women in Florida will have to face, especially if a six-week ban goes into effect, as is expected. And are those stories then going to fuel, I think, the drive to turn the state blue in November? As you said, as you said, turning the state blue, Jonathan Lemire said, hmm, because yes, everyone mm -hmm. feels that d Florida is not a, a blue or a blue place, really. It used to be purple, increasingly has become red, but in the last couple of um, cycles, particularly I'm thinking about the special election, the runoff election in Jacksonville, Florida for mayor, where for the first time in, in ever, a woman is the mayor of Jacksonville, Florida, Mayor Donna Deegan, and she's only the second Democrat to lead that city in 30 years. 
years, abortion was a part of that story. Democrats in Florida have been organizing, um, Mika, and because of that organizing, I think they are seeing gains. What the Florida Supreme Court did yesterday, they ruled in favor of the 15-week abortion ban, and last year, when the Republican legislators in Florida passed that six-week abortion ban, um, and they passed it because people were coming to Florida to get abortions because it, it was one of the only places left in the Southeast where you could get an abortion if that is what you need, mm -hmm. if that was the care that you needed. Well, Ron DeSantis didn't like that, and so he pressured the legislature to pass an even stricter abortion ban, and they wrote in that provision that if, when the Supreme, if the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the 15 week, the 16, the six week would automatically go into effect, and that's where we had this 30 days. And so Democrats, um, and I just read this in Punchbowl News before I came on, are launching, particularly in Florida today, their field hearings, House Democrats. Um, uh, House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries is down there with a host of Democrats, Florida Democrats like Debbie Wasserman Soltz, but also folks like Barbara Lee, who has been a reproductive rights champion for a long time. And this is the part of a six-month campaign, House Democrats are saying, to really make Florida ground zero for the reproductive rights fight and reproductive freedom. And you couple that with the Biden ad, uh, Democrats Democrats definitely think that Florida, there's a path for them in Florida, and I don't think they're wrong, given the extremism that we're seeing. Well, thanks to Donald Trump, and he does take the credit for the overturning of Roe and all the different things that have happened as ripple effects to that momentous decision taking away 50 years of rights. And I just want to point out, as we turn to John Hallman on all of this, um, you know, the far right and, and Trump Republicans and abortion right, uh, uh, right to life activists, um, they've poisoned the word abortion. They make it sound like some sort of crime uh, it, by some sort of lazy woman who is immoral. The hypocrisy is incredible, but I won't digress. You don't want me to do that. Um, at the same time, I think that Democrats need to be smart with their words. I would take the word life. I would take the word life, life of the mother, especially with um, the uh, cases of unviable uh, pregnancies. We see mothers' lives at risk. Right to have life, IVF, right to have a family. I would take their word and um, I, I would tell them what to do with it, but it's abortion health care. It is part of our normal health care. That needs to get out there. That message needs to be sent to Democrats and Republicans who will vote on this issue because it affects their everyday life. So, John Hellman, Michigan and Florida, go. Hmm. Well, Mika, first of all, I think um, that the message that you're uh, uh, putting forward there is, is that mess is out there. I think there are a lot of Democrats who are hearing that message, and we've seen that obviously over the course of everything, the, post, the period of post ops politics. And, uh, you know, just to reemphasize in Florida, which I think is the more, well, Florida is, our, is the newsier, so I'll, I'll try to do that one first. Uh, you know, Florida is, uh, the, the, emphasize the human cost of this, and, and you said uh, uh, good news, bad news. Uh, obviously, this decisions yesterday is bad news for uh, women in Florida, bad news for uh, everybody who loves women in Florida, bad news for women's health care in Florida, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, as a political matter, and I'm, I'm here sitting here, I got Simone Sanders on one side, I got Lemire over on the other side. Uh, uh, let's just, let's put it this way. Um, you know, Florida is a state that, that, that Barack Obama won twice. Uh, uh, Hillary Clinton lost it by, I think, a point and a half or so in, in, 20, in 2016. Uh, and Joe Biden lost it by about double that amount, about three point something, three, three and a half points or something in, in 2020. Uh, so Trump increased his margin there. Why did that happen? It happened almost entirely for one reason, which was the Hispanic vote in Florida, where uh, Donald Trump did overperformed anybody's expectations in Florida in 2020. What's happened with Latino votes over the course of the last three years? Trump is in, has, has, has by, by all polling that we have, uh, has gotten stronger with Hispanics than he than he was three years ago. This is why people like John, John Lemire and a lot of people on the Biden campaign look at Florida, have looked at Florida and said, until this day, have looked at Florida and said, that's not a battleground state anymore. That's not in the six or seven states that are gonna swing the election. Uh, the, the big caveat to that is this Dobbs 
this post Dobbs era and the and injecting abortion uh, into the debate in Florida. It is going to change things in Florida. It is going to bring out new kind of democratic energy. At, at least if we were, if we judge it on the basis of everything else we've seen post Dobbs, the question I think is where are we going to be when we get to uh, September? And and I don't think you can say right now that there's anybody who is telling the truth in the Biden campaign who says that they are convinced today that that Florida is now a state they're going to go spend money in. They're going to try to turn that into a battleground state. There's just too much data that suggests that it might be out of reach. Uh, but I do think that if we get to September and that race looks and things have tightened there to the point where it yeah. does look winnable, you may see that become a reach state for the Biden campaign. And that would obviously alter the whole calculus of the election. If Florida became a thing that was within reach for Joe Biden, uh, it would change mm -hmm. the whole trajectory. It would change the whole battleground, the whole battleground matrix for the race because you really would go from not just six or seven states, but you'd have this additional state with a giant number of electoral votes suddenly in play. I right now sitting here today, I'm mm -hmm. not going to bet on that, but I, I'm certain the Biden campaign is going to push at it over the course of the next mm -hmm. few months to see if they can nudge it into that vicinity. At the very least, yeah. there'll be misdirection, and they'll look like they are, and that makes the Republicans have to spend resources in Florida, resources they don't really have. So there's no doubt uh, that Florida becomes more interesting today than it was two days ago, let's say, even if it's perhaps not quite in play. Uh hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.